Hey, what's up? This is Mark Made, aka Five Bar of Doom, and I just wanted to uh, give you a little podcast. I think I might start doing podcasts again. Um, you know, if you got any of you guys were following me back in the day when I was on uh, just Five Bar of Doom on Facebook, <clears throat> I had uh, my podcast, which I call the Two and Barbecue Feasible Podcast, and uh, <clears throat> it was pretty fun. But I haven't done a podcast in a while, so um, this weekend was the DFW Championships of Foosball. I figured I'd recap that a bit talk about my experience in the tournament and um, kind of, you know, how the tournament went for me, how the tournament went for everybody else, and just how to, like, aside from my performance, like, how the tournament go. Um, I also want to mention a uh, pet peeve I have <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> we'll see if you guys agree with this or not. And I also kind of want to talk about, uh, you know, just the situation of partners kind of ditching other partners, uh, especially really close to a tournament, and how I kind of have dealt with that in my experience. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's kicking off. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, if you haven't uh, clicked like or uh, followed me on my page, please do that. Um, kind of, it helps me out and helps more people see um, all the foosball stuff. So I appreciate it. And uh, so it's first talking about the uh, tournament in general. So um, <clears throat> it's going through all the different events uh, this weekend. They had a mega DYP and uh, you know, the mega was really cool. Uh, it was nice having some people from out of state you know, it was still mostly people from the DFW in the tournament, but uh, there were some people from out of state there, like Tommy Atkinson was there, um, you know, Tony Owens was there, some guys from Houston and stuff like uh, Richard Smith. And I think, well, actually, I'm not sure if he's going to draw some there that weekend, but, you know, it's cool just having a mega with, uh, you know, other than the normal crew that you would see on Saturday up at the chop shop. So it's pretty cool. There's 52 people in the mega, and uh, Brandon Moreland and Ron Anthony won it. Um, I was lucky enough to get second place in it with Radic, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. <clears throat> in mixed, there were 11 teams, and Brandon Moreland and Ellen Moon beat uh, Tommy uh, Atkinson and Heather Chapman, so another win for Brandon there. In uh, open doubles, Brandon wins it again, so Brandon Moreland and Ellen Moon beat Tommy Atkinson and Jason Wicks, so uh, good job Tommy and Jason getting second, but uh, another, another good win for, for Brandon. And uh, Brandon basically tripled this weekend there. He also got second in open singles. So open singles, Tommy Atkinson won. Brandon got second. And uh, some of the lower, lower events in uh, expert doubles, Bob and Deliza beat uh, Tom Rios and Steve Duncan in the final. And uh, Deliza handed me my ass as well in our match there. So that was painful. In uh, expert singles... Uh, Tom Rios is in the finals of that as well, and, and that one he beat Ellen. So Ellen made it into four, it's four finals, I guess it's three finals, but a really good performance from Ellen, and a big, good win from Tom there. 27 players in expert singles. On the uh, amateur side, in uh, amateur doubles, Evan McGregor and uh, Brittany <clears throat> beat Jay Cordell and his wife Pam. It was super cool seeing uh, Jay out with his wife. Uh, hopefully Pam will get out and play some of the megas on the weekend and whatnot. And, uh, you know, good win by Brittany and Evan. I think Brittany just won something in uh, whatever the last tournament she went to was. Like, she won, like, extra dubs or something. But, uh, yeah, good win, amateur dubs. This kid, Evan McGregor, apparently is some new kid on the scene. He's pretty young. His dad plays. And apparently he's pretty good. I guess he beat Tommy Atkinson in some sort of singles out in Oklahoma. I don't really know the situation around that. But he uh, seems like a nice kid. And apparently he's doing pretty good. So it's a good job to Evan there. And, uh... Amateur singles, uh, Bomb won uh, amateur singles, uh, beating out Mike McKinley. There were uh, 20 players in that. So congrats to Bomb. Bomb won expert doubles and amateur singles. Really good. Bomb's been playing just off the hook lately, so not too surprising that he would win those, but uh, excellent job. So for me personally, um, I ended up having a pretty decent tournament. I ended up getting second in the Mega, like I said. I got off to kind of a slow start in the opening rounds. I think I lost my first two rounds and, uh, and basically won the next three. I was like 18th as far as the, the ranking went. But then, lo and behold, you know, the magic of the Mega. It's just like, who knows who's going to be where, uh, you know, in the end. Uh, luckily, I somehow, uh, Radic was, was there for me to pick. And uh, I found out because he told me that uh, he picked himself for me. <laughs> Because uh, I, would, I would basically you know, pick him if I saw what was going on. So that was really cool. And, uh, and me and Radek were also playing in the uh, you know, in open doubles this weekend. So that was a really cool opportunity to get a, get a warm-up with Radek. 
And, uh, you know, it ended up working out really well. I had some good matches there. I thought I played pretty well against uh, Vu and Lauren. And, uh, like, so we made it all the way to the final. We, um, I even had, I had some shots to win it. It's, you know, it's one of those things, like, it's pretty brutal. But, uh, you know, it went down to meat nut. It's, uh, you know, single elimination. So, single set. Gets down to meat nut. I have it on my five. Pass. Pass on Brandon. Catch it. Cool. Awesome. Now time to shoot on Ron. See, like, an amateur or something like that. You know, Ron's good, but essentially, like, the tough part of the equation here has been accomplished, right? Like, I passed on Brandon. Um, the shot should really be the easier part. And shot a roller once, got blocked, came back to me. Shot a roller again, got blocked, came back to me. And I didn't have any timeouts or anything. And I decided to go for my, uh, my dink that I always go for. It wasn't there. So, um, so yeah, so it's kind of funny, you know what I mean? It's like one ball for it all to, you know, to get first or second. It's probably, that one ball is probably worth like, you know, a couple hundred bucks minimum. So, um, kind of interesting to look back on it. You know, in retrospect, um, you know, I think obviously it probably would have been better to shoot up a roller. Um, maybe, maybe even like if I had to go the trick shot route, I think a slingshot would have been a much better option just because it's meat nut. I think you're going to be a little bit jumpier. And if I can, you know, pop up, do that uh, slingshot, I think that probably would have been a better move. So, um, and like, I honestly, like I haven't, Ron hasn't been around like all the Wednesdays and Saturdays. He might not necessarily 100% know like the slinger's coming. Like, if I set it up, like it, there's a very obvious way I can set it up to where you're like, okay, it's clear the slinger's coming. But, um, you know, if you don't play against me enough, you might not see it. So it, it's possible I could squeak that in for the win and that would have been pretty epic. But um, but yeah, I didn't, I lost it. And then, uh, you know, the dink got blocked and then Ron just ripped one immediately from the pits. So instant, uh, fail there. So, oh, well, but, uh, it was a really fun tournament. Raddick played great. And, uh, you know, it was cool getting second with him there, especially the first event of the weekend. I was like, man, I really got something rolling here. It's pretty good. In, uh, in mixed, I didn't do that great. I, we, uh, we played Evan, uh, Evan Stachelak first round and, uh, you know, got beat down. In the losers, I forget who we lost to. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't really perform that well in mixed. I mean, to be honest, like the whole weekend for me, like my three bar wasn't great. Like I was kind of switching forth between a roller and a pull. I had some success with both, but um, it also wasn't super consistent. So there were just some matches where, where I needed a little bit more consistency in the three bar. Uh, and that definitely showed up in mixed and, uh, you know, it manifested itself in losing there. So, um, open doubles though went really well. So, I, you know, I played with, uh, David Raddick, um, you know, again, Raddick, thanks for playing with me, buddy. Totally badass. I had, a, I had a blast. Um, I thought it went really well. Um, you know, it's kind of hard playing with new partners in tournaments. Uh, you know, we haven't played together a whole bunch. We don't have a good rhythm as far as like passing and stuff. Raddick has some really interesting passes. Um, you know, he had one where he would basically, the ball's coming to the near side and he was let it roll all the way to the near wall and just pop it right down the near wall. So you have to have your man down to catch it on the near wall. Um, that one, I dropped a bunch of those passes just because I wasn't really used to it. Um, you know, we had some pretty good lane passes that I was able to catch. So by the end of the tournament, I felt like our chemistry was kind of going along a little bit better. Um, but overall, it was really exciting getting to play with Radic. Like, it, it's pretty cool living in DFW just because there's so many pros and like former pro masters. You know, a lot of these guys are pros today, but um, you know, they're all masters back in the day. You know, it's like Warren was a master. He's a pro now. Or maybe he's like a master in dubs and not, and not in singles or something like that. <clears throat> you know, like uh, who else? Like Dennis, Ori was a master. He's just, he's a pro now. You know, Radic was a master. He's a pro now. So, um, you know, I don't know if Charles was a pro before, a master before. I assume yes. Um, but, you know, there's just a ton, a ton of these guys in DFW that uh, are, are in that pro level that, um, you know, it's pretty cool that I have access to, uh, to get to play with some of these guys on a weekly basis. And, and luckily, you know, I'm picking some of them up for these majors. So that makes like open doubles way more exciting for me as someone who, you know, I'm still technically an expert in doubles. So, um, you know, picking up, picking up a, a top partner in these open doubles, it really makes the event just a lot more fun and a lot more attainable to, to get a good result. So, um, so yeah, so it was badass. So I played with Radic, had an awesome time. I had a couple badass matches, honestly. Like we played against uh, Dennis and uh, Steve Duncan, and uh, 
I definitely wanted to win that one because I was kind of hoping me and Dennis would play again. <laughs> we played it Halloween. I thought we did pretty well, but uh, he was partnered up with Steve, so that was cool. But I definitely wanted to beat him just because, you know, we had partnered up before and uh, I kind of wanted to uh, make these guys want to play with me as opposed to play against me. So I actually did really well, bricked, bricked him pretty good. And we won that one. We had another tough one against Warren and uh, Brad Lorene. You know, Warren and Brad have been teaming up a lot lately. I think they won the tournament down in Austin recently. They're going to TKO. They've been playing a lot of foosball. And, uh, you know, they're a strong team. So it was pretty badass that we were able to beat them as well. And, uh, yeah, got all the way up to fourth. You know, we lost to uh, Evan. And uh, I forget who Evan uh, Statulak was playing with in dubs. But I remember we lost to Evan... And then in the losers, we lost to Brandon, and uh, I think it was pretty close. But, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how that went, and uh, so it was exciting. Got fourth place, pretty fun. You know, open singles, I got fifth. I didn't play very good in open. Um, to be honest, I just got super drunk on Saturday. Like, it was brutal. Like, I, I, we are kind of planning on not drinking that much, and then you kind of get there, and you see everybody, and you're partying, and you're sitting around waiting. So the fireball starts flowing, and there you have it. So I think, like, you know, my Saturday performance was uh, you know, certainly impacted by alcohol. And, uh, you know, by the time singles got started, I was just so tired as well. So that was kind of brutal. So, um, so, you know, so overall, like, I, you know, alcohol definitely impacted me negatively this weekend. And I think, you know, some of my results, uh, you know, definitely point to that as well. So, kind of a bummer. Um, you know, expert doubles, I sucked as well. Like, I just didn't play very good. Um, like, I, I rewatched the match. We played against Bomb and Deliza. Deliza killed us out of the pitch. She played badass. She scored, scored a ton out of the pitch. She was blocking me really good. So, uh, you know, she definitely won that match. And when I went back and watched it, you know, it's kind of just like the classic Mark Motti losing a match, which the answer is always the three bar is not good enough. So, um, so yeah, just another kind of obvious uh, thing I need to fix, which is improve that three bar. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, though, um, yeah, so my three bar was off and on. So me and Radic had to switch a lot, which was actually really fun. I had a pretty good switching dynamic with Radic as well. I've had, I've had kind of tougher times switching with other players. Sometimes I'll partner up with, with people where we're both kind of more primarily forwards. And in that type of situation, I kind of tend to shift to the goal and just focus there. Um, I haven't really played with anybody that's that's pretty balanced like that, where they you know they're down to play front or back. You know, uh, Radic was kind of defaulting to putting me up front if I wanted to do it, which was super neat. And uh, but we also had some matches where he played up front. You know, we had some where we had to switch, and like I won a game up front, he won a couple games up front. So that was that was really cool. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking for in a partner, honestly, is, like, somebody that can do that switching uh, effectively. Because I think it's just, like, super powerful. You know, if you have two players that can play, you know, in one position or the other, it just makes it so much better. Because, you know, over the course of a very long tournament weekend, you're going to have some ups and downs. Like, if you're not a pro master, you're going to have some consistency issues. You know, Friday night, you're playing great. You know, Saturday... Maybe you get tired, your arm is feeling bad, you're not shooting as well, but then maybe your partner's kind of starting to heat up and run hot. Now you can put them up front and let them, you know, win some of the match for you. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to switch, you don't really, you can't leverage that dynamic. And, um, you know, I think that is, it's just a weakness, you know what I mean? Because you just don't have as much flexibility uh, in how to win the match. And sometimes you do just have to, like, find the way to win the match, right? Like, it's not going to be just be pass and score, if you're not scoring, you know what I mean? It might have to be the other person has a pass score. Um, and if you don't have that option, got to figure something out. Hack them out, shit them out, you know what I mean? Just, like, get do something. Um, but, yeah, overall, like, for me, I felt pretty great this weekend. Like, physically, I felt really good. Um, I've been working out, like, more than ever, um, you know, just over the last, like, couple months. And as far as, like, how I feel now compared to how I would feel after, like, a long tournament weekend earlier, I definitely just feel way better. Like, nor like normally by the end of a weekend, my shoulder is really, really sore. Like my chest right here will get super sore just, just from shooting a roller. Uh, you know, this is sore. My shoulders will get sore. My back will like hurt. I'm sure a lot of you guys, especially the older guys are, are having back pain issues because you're just hunched over that table all weekend. 
and uh, you know I'm feeling awesome. So it was really cool to to be in a little bit better shape for the tournament because I could just feel like you know I just performed better in that way just from being a little bit better shape. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, as far as the tournament itself, um, you know, I thought it went really well. So shout out to Brittany and Jason. They did a great job around the tournament. And there are just a lot of positive things about the tournament. I think it ran really well. Um, you know, we weren't there too late ever. You know, they're, they're pretty much wrapping up matches around like maybe 1.30 um, or so. You know, 2 for sure. You're out of there. And the next day, they were starting events at like 1. I think like the Mega... I think actually, if I had, if I had a match... It would be like scheduled for like 11:30, and um, you know, new match, new tournaments wouldn't start to like one. So it was just kind of cool because some of these tournaments, like you have to go to bed really early, and then I mean, go to bed super late, and then like matches will start at like nine or something, and it's just too early. So so not having to start till like 11:30, that was really cool, cause especially for like the people in town. Like you're not just staying in a hotel, um, you know, a two minute walk away. It's like you know. Probably like for me, for us, it's like half hour drive. For other people, you know, similar could be longer, whatever. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to get that time to get home, get some sleep, and uh, you know, shower in the morning and get back without having to really just cram it. So I thought that went really well. Um, on you know, also there's plenty of tables. So there's there's like twelve tables. Normally at the chop shop they have four, so they brought eight other tables in, and uh, that was great. You know, honestly, I didn't know uh, how it was going to work out table wise. But there was always tables to play on. There definitely was like never a shortage of tables. Um, you know, you go to some other tournaments. Like, like for me, Colorado State's uh, is kind of notorious for there's so many people there, um, and they have. You know, I wasn't there this year, so I can't really speak for this year. But I know a couple years ago, it was just really difficult to find a table to like warm up on. They're always just packed because there's just so many people. You know, so th this one obviously it's not Colorado State, right? It's like it's like a small weekend tournament. But, um, but I've just really been digging that vibe lately of these like small weekenders. And uh, it's really cool to have like Jason and Brittany throwing these. And also um, like Tommy and Tony Owens and those guys up in, up in Tulsa are also throwing these kind of small, smaller weekend tournaments. And, uh, you know, they did one over New Year's Eve. And, uh, you know, it's just really cool to play like, you know, get up there Friday night, play like a DYP or like one event. You know, play two days of foosball, that's it. You're done Sunday night, you can drive home. You know, that turn that size of a tournament is just really good. Like I hate the tournaments where it's like Wednesday night, maybe you're there, Thursday, and you're playing like four or five days. It's just too much, man. You know what I mean? It's just like I'm sick of foos, honestly, by that point. Like I just want to play a couple days. You know, playing one tournament in a night, that's not that's not enough for me. Like I need to play some of these bigger ones sometimes. But once you get like two days of foos in. I'm pretty burned out, man. So, like, I really like the size of this tournament. Uh, we, you know, one thing that was really cool about this tournament also is they really had a limited number of events, which was, it was really good because it just, I think it reduces conflicts a lot. So, like, for example, they had, there's no senior events, no beginner events. Um, maybe what's more controversial, there's no rookie events. There were no pro events. There were no pro events. That's, like, every tournament, right? Um, but no, Ricky events is kind of unusual. Um, you know, they had amateur and they had expert, which is fine. And then uh, there's also no women's events. So, you know, so they had kind of like a mix of events that they, that they didn't have. Um, but, you know, but they obviously like you're a Ricky, they still have all the amateur events. You know, you're a pro and, you know, it's a pretty small field. There's not that many pro masters. You have your open events. It's fine. It kind of serves as, uh, you know, a pro event with a couple masters sprinkled in. So um, I thought that was really good. It worked out really good for me. I played plenty of foos. Um, also, I had plenty of time to kind of hang out and just have fun chatting with everybody and seeing everybody from out of town. It was really cool. So I thought it went made for a really smooth tournament. Um, you know, Jason had his two tables streaming, which is sick. You know, I love I love having the two tables um, going at once. It's awesome. You know, I was able to go back. I, I went and watched a couple matches already from the weekend, so it's just really neat to have that have that going and be able to go back and watch some matches. Um, you know, they use Modern Foosball app to run it, which I love, although honestly there was a little bit of controversy, like I, uh, I misclicked the result on one of my matches and I immediately, I like, I noticed, I was like, oh, crap, you know, I clicked the kind of, I clicked the wrong winner, 
So I went up to the desk and told them, but then there was some sort of mix up and basically drama. You probably know about it if you're on the internet. But uh, anyway, some drama there. My bad for entering a uh, the wrong result. It, it seems like Modern Foods, the app, they could maybe handle that in a better way. So uh, maybe David can kind of get the rundown on that situation. But uh, but you know, but in general though, Modern Foods like that's the app, right? And like that's by far the best way to run a tournament. I thought it was great. I love getting the text alerts. Um, you know, the app itself is good. If you can look up, look up where you're at in the bracket and things like that, it, it works pretty good. So I was real happy with that. You know, I definitely, that's any tournament I play, I love it to be on the Modern Foosball app because it works really well. The, um, as far as the bar also, like it was laid out really well. Uh, I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like, but you know, normally we have uh, four tables kind of in the back of the bar. Um, with like a tiny little cocktail table in the middle of them. They had, they put a bunch, maybe six tables in that area, and they put like a really long uh, wood table in the middle there, which I thought was great because it just gave a lot more space to kind of sit down or eat or just chill. Because like during the mega, like it, they have like a, like a little table there in the middle or two, and there's just not enough room. Like people just put their coats and drinks there, and there's not really enough room to hang out. It seems, you know, so I, I really like that long table in the middle. It was pretty cool. I, they, maybe they're not going to leave it there, but, um, but I did like it. And um, yeah, I just thought it was great. You know, the bar's great. Food's great. Um, you know, Cade and uh, Brittany, everybody like the bartenders are great. And, um, yeah, just had, you know, I had a really fun time. We're doing shots with the bartenders. Um, you know, it was just like, it was fun. You know, I, I had a great time and, uh, you know, it was also really cool seeing a bunch of you guys out. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really interact with all you guys online all the time. Uh, you know, but I do, I know a bunch of you guys aren't necessarily hitting like or commenting all the time, but, um, you know, I know people are watching my videos here and there and it is really neat for me to, um, just get to talk to you guys a little bit and you know some of you guys are like oh i've seen some of your videos and it's really neat honestly like especially like you know a lot of you guys are really good at foods and it's pretty cool when you know some some cool awesome people at foods are like watching my videos it makes me feel good and uh you know it's really cool uh getting to meet all you guys so so thanks for saying hi and uh you know i pre really do appreciate you watching the videos and, and like watching this podcast and things like that so, um, you know, specifically, like, shout out to uh, Evan Stachelek. Uh Evan's cool as hell, man. Uh, you know, he was there for uh, the, like, Wednesday bring draw, him and his girl, uh, Janine. And what's cool is, like, Evan lives in California. His girl's in New Orleans, so they can come and meet, like, in Dallas in the middle. So it's, like, a cool vacation, plus they can play some foods. Uh, Evan just has a really good attitude. He's, like, a fun guy, nice, super nice dude. And uh, also, like, plays awesome. You know, he's been around the game forever. He's got this nasty push kick, which I love because I don't really get to see a good push kick ever. So that's really neat. And uh, so love seeing Evan out. You know, good to see you out, buddy. Hope to see you out the next one. Um, you know, some other out-of-towners, like Corey Jensen is there. What's up, bro? Um, you know, Richard Smith, <laughs> Snag. He had his uh, uh, anti-Dallas uh, Cowboys shirt on, which was fucking hilarious. Like, I don't did he make, he, did he make that? I think he did. But basically, it was like a Cowboys star. He has posted a picture of it on his page. But it's basically a Cowboys star and then a big, like, no sign. And then, like, I think on the back, it just says the Dallas Cowboys suck. So pretty hilarious to wear that on uh, in a Dallas bar on Sunday. So uh, some mad props <laughs> to you, Richard. That was pretty hilarious. Um, you know, it's also cool to have Tommy Atkinson out. You know, Tommy is one of the best. So it's always cool to see him out, see him competing against people in town. I didn't get to play him because... I didn't play good enough in the open events to get there, but, uh, you know, hopefully next time I will. And, uh, like, Tony Owens, what's up? Shout out. Um, always good to see Tony and Tommy, the big promoters out in Tulsa, and uh, just good foozers and cool people in general. So, good seeing you guys. Um, next topic, uh, pet peeve. So, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but this is, like, a total pet peeve for me, and it just happened a bunch of times throughout the weekend. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't, I just don't care that much, but it's, it is also somewhat annoying. And here's the situation. It's like, you're playing a match, ball's in play, right? And then something happens external to the table, like loud. Like there was a couple times where it was like, it was like Cowboys run, right? So like they score and it's just like, ah, and there's like, Boo! there's like sirens and like, there's just all this noise, right? There's a ton of noise, but you're in a bar. Um, 
And what people will do is they'll like, oh, stop, you know, stop the action. And they'll just kind of pause and essentially take a timeout without calling timeout and just sort of wait till all the fanfare dies down. I think most people are pretty cool with it. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to say anything about it. I just think it's kind of dumb because you're in a bar. You know what I mean? This isn't golf where it's like everybody has to be quiet. You're in a bar. I think you should expect a bar atmosphere. And, um, you know, if the TV's loud or people are cheering, I kind of think you got to fight through it. You got to either fight through it or, you know, take a time out if you need your time out or use it, right? Like if it's distracting to you, probably distracting the other people, you know, you're sitting there on your three, you hear like, woo, you know, it's like they score, just bam, bust the shot at that point and use it. Like that's legal. But I think like just pausing the action. I mean, another thing too is like, here's another one, right? And I know you've seen this. Um, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. And then a ball comes through. Maybe a ball just rolls under the table. And then it's like, oh, everybody stop the action. We got to get this ball. It's like, why are we doing this? The, the, it's not affecting our play at all. Maybe it's going to like tap your foot. I think you can wait until the ball's over, um, you know, to do that. to like a, like a normal stopping point. The ball one, maybe that's not as bad, but, but I think it is pretty ridiculous to uh, just stop play because it's of like a loud distraction, somebody talking or somebody yelling or uh, a siren or something like that. So just my two cents on that. Uh, so it's a pet peeve segment. And uh, yeah, last one I want to talk about, um, I'm not like, you know, it's another thing, man. I'm not mad about it. I don't care. But, you know, sometimes you run into these situations where you sign up for a tournament you get a partner, and then the partner ditches you. You know what I mean? And honestly, this has kind of happened to, to me and just other people, like, more than I would expect. Um, but basically what happens is, yeah, you're like, okay, I'll play with you, cool. And then for whatever reason, the day of the tournament comes and, you know, they're nowhere to be found. Or they, they're like, I'm not going to make it or whatever. Um, you know, I've had this happen a few times uh like one time I was really deep in uh, Texas State pro dubs in the losers, but we were running pretty hot and my partner bailed because they just had to like catch a ride home or whatever. Like that really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, you know, Colorado State, also I had like a good expert dubs partner lined up, or maybe it was pro dubs I was pretty pumped about and, uh, and they bailed on me. I didn't even know about it. I actually heard from somebody else that was partnered up with them that they weren't coming. So I was able to call them and confirm and get a new partner like that day. But, um, but that was another time that I've been ditched for uh, partners. And then this weekend, um, you know, some stuff went on and somebody I was going to play with, uh, decided not to show up. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on them. Honestly, it's fine. I mean, shit comes up, but I did I, I do kind of want to run by you like my response to this. Cause I, I just think it's a good plan and, and what I've decided to do in those situations is, is you just don't play with that person again. You know what I mean? Like, pretty much simple as that. Like, and, and the reason I say that is, you know, and that might sound kind of extreme to like, oh, well, you know, if people have shit come up and, you know, and it kind of depends, right? If, if there's like some legit, like, let, you know, for example, let, let's say I was going to play, actually, let's take an example that happened to me where I, where I ended up ditching partners. So like last Texas State, I, I had partners lined up. And I got in a, you know, I got in a cycling accident that week and, you know, I fell, I hurt my wrist. I basically couldn't move my wrist very well for like at least a month, maybe longer. And foosball was just out. Like I just couldn't even move my wrist. Like maybe you could play goalie, but, but even then it hurt so bad. Like I just couldn't do it. Um, and that was just like an injury situation. So like what, you know, and that was on the Tuesday and the tournament or it's been Monday or Tuesday and tournament started on Friday or Thursday. So you know, I went to quick care and, you know, in the waiting room at quick care, I'm texting my partners like, Hey man, this happened. Maybe I can play. I have no idea. I have to kind of see what happens, you know? Um, but you know, please get other partners immediately. Um, to me, like that type of situation, you know, that type of thing's going to happen, right? Or somebody has some medical issue or there's going to be legit reasons to, to ditch a partner. And in that case, you know, it's fine. But, but then there's other cases where someone just decides not to show up um, and those are less fine or decides to like leave the tournament early. That happened to Beth as well. She was in some tournament and it was like the final day and her partner is like, 
oh, well, you know, I have a flight coming back, so there you have it. I'm going to have to bail on these events. It's like, what are you doing, man? It's like we're, we're traveling across the country to go to these events, and you're going to bail? I mean, it ain't cheap, right? I mean, these entry fees are high, and payouts are low. So, you know, you're spending a lot of money. You're trying to get across the country, play a tournament, and, uh, you know, if somebody bails on you or, or leaves the tournament early, to me, kind of what that says is they're just not in the same mental state that you are as far as like where partners lie and where your priorities in general lie, right? Like for me, if I say I'm gonna play a tournament with someone, you know, I'm, I'm doing it, period. Like there, you know, there might be a time where I can't make it for some reason, but it's gonna have to be like a really serious thing. And when that comes up, like I'm gonna tell people immediately. Now, if it's just a situation where, like, I don't want to play the tournament, I'm not going to bail. Like, that's just not how it works. Like, and it's not just like, oh, hey, play the bring draw with me on Wednesday. And then that afternoon, they're like, oh, you know, I'm not really feeling it. I mean, who cares? That You know, I don't care. Whatever, dude. It's fine. You know what I mean? But when you're talking like a weekend tournament where you're paying like hundreds of dollars in entry fees and it's kind of like a bigger... Um, you know, a bigger deal that, you know, for me, maybe I'll play, you know, three or four of these type of tournaments, like a weekend tournament a year, if I'm lucky. I bet I do this year, because now we're in DFW, and they'll have them going in Tulsa and stuff like that, too. So I bet I'll play three or four. Um, but, you know, for those ones, like, it's a big commitment, right? It's like a whole weekend. It's like, a you know, testing your skills, and you want to do your best. So having a partner bail on you at the last second, like, it just really is a brutal thing. And, and for me, on the flip side of the coin too, there's so many partners to play with, right? Like there's so many choices. Like when I, when I think about partners, it's, it's so difficult because like there, there's so many good players to play with. There's so many people I like just personally that would be so fun to play with. And um, the list is endless. You know what I mean? There's so many players you could play with that if, if, you, if you have this experience with a certain player where um, they just bail on you for not a very good reason, then that's it. I mean, I just think that's, personally, I think that's how you should handle it. Just be like, that's fine. You don't need to be mad at them or anything. But at the same time, you know, am I going to play with you at, you know, at the next major, one of these weekend ones? No, of course not. Because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get a partner that takes being ser being a partner seriously. You know, is there on time? You know, not causing any drama. Showing up at the table when the tournament's supposed to be, you know, when they're called. I don't have to, like, hunt them down. There's just a lot of partner etiquette stuff that, um, you know, I'm looking for in a partner. That I don't think is asking a whole lot. It's just, like, basics. You know what I mean? But one of those basics is committing to, committing to attending the tournament if you, you know, say you're going to play the tournament. You know, for me, this one, it doesn't affect me that, that badly or anything. Um, Beth, I think, kind of got screwed a lot more, you know, because basically, like, she was going to play uh, amateur dubs. That's kind of, like, one of her big events. And uh, partner bailed out, like, that day. Um, you know, and I get it, man. Everybody's got their own, um, you know, everybody's got their own situations and shit going on. So, you know, I'm not, like, you know, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But, you know, but at the same time, would I recommend Beth play with that player again? Of course not. I think it's a you know terrible idea because just get somebody else that's going to actually commit to to be there and care about your tournament as well as caring about their tournament. So um, so yeah, so that's, that's just kind of how I feel about all that stuff that went down there. Um, I think that's about it. Um, yep, I don't really have anything else. This is just, uh, I think I'm going to try to do these uh, these kind of podcasts once in a while. I didn't really have any good strategy segments this time or anything, but, um, you know, I'll try to do some in the future. And, um, you know, let me know in the comments, you know, do you like this kind of thing? I think you guys do, honestly. I think people want to hear about foods and they think it's fun just kind of like hearing people chat about foods. Well, so if you like it, let me know. If there's type of topics that you'd like me to cover um, when we're chatting like this, let me know. You know, in the future, I might do some interviews. When I did it on the... Uh, like two and barbecue podcast. It was fun, but it was just really stressful, honestly. Like, you know, coming up with like a bunch of questions and then sort of like executing on this interview and then going back and like editing it all together was a lot of work and it's just like tedious, crappy work. So, um, 
So this time around, what I'm kind of thinking is I'll just do these one take videos. I, I was thinking about doing this live today, but then it kind of chickened out. So I'm just going to um, record it and then post it. In the future, I'll probably do them live. And I think that'll give us some opportunity to like do some interviews or like bring people other on other people on to like ask questions or whatever it might be. So, um, so you know, there's some options there. If you know, if you like that idea, please let me know. Um, you know, if nobody cares about these, I don't have to do them, right? <laughs> I don't care. But uh, I think somebody might want to hear it. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And um, you know, again, shout out to Brittany and Jason for running the tournament this weekend. It was badass. Um, it definitely. Um, kind of calm down my foos fever. You know, it was nice to get a full weekend of foosball in. I feel like I can take a break now and just kind of chill. Um, you know, I'm not like I need to just play nonstop foosball. I got a bunch in this weekend, you know, so that was really neat. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And I will see you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be, I guess I'll probably be at singles tomorrow, maybe Volcanoes Wednesday, not too sure. But I will see all you guys soon. And uh, yeah, have a great night. Keep foosing.